Okay, now this is going to be a bit of an interesting video. This is a hard drive a customer just brought in. has extremely important data on it that he cannot lose. Uh, see the model number here? Not for resale. Uh, anyway, this drive he got somewhere in the Middle East uh, country. Uh, basically, long story short, is he snapped his uh, USB cable off it. Sure, I can just solder off that jack, change those little tiny pins there, but I don't have a jack. So, and he was having problems with having to wiggle the jack and whatever else. So, you can see in there. There you go, now you can see the wire. So, yes, I could solder that off, I could do it. Uh, obviously, he was already trying to, tr uh, playing with it. Uh, he had started pulling the stickers off the drive here and trying to undo the bolts on it uh, so it's hard to say if this drive is even going to be good but what I'm going to be doing is hooking up my two powers here and my SATA connection directly to the board try to focus on there so those are your SATA connection and your two powers and I'm going to be hooking up just a standard SATA cable to it so I'm going to be soldering that sucker right on there of course I'm going to be separating all the wires uh, and for the power, it's just these two first pins on there. I, I know it's not going to uh, be able to show these very well here, but it's the first set right here and the first set right there. So what I'll do now, and he said it was working great until he broke the USB. So, so yes, time for some delicate soldering. Uh, yes, I could just change the entire board, but that's like 50 bucks to order the board, and then i got to change uh, the chips here. And, uh, yes, I don't really want to have to do that, even though I have done that multiple times. Those two suckers right there. I'm looking through my viewfinder, that's why my fingers are going everywhere, so just give me a second and I'll show you what I did. Okay, I planned to do it a little bit differently now, so I just violently tore these suckers off this old drive. So now I got my USB header, so I can actually just plug in a standard USB cable. It's going to be a lot easier to solder jumper cables onto this. To the board so this one here was off my donor drive this one here was a 160 gig samsung or hitachi drive so that has nothing to do with it you can pull this off any drive anywhere uh, the reason why i'm posting this video is in case someone else has this issue they can kind of see more or less what they need to do so just give me a few seconds and i'll uh i just plugged in the soldering gun yes i'm using this uh el cheapo 20 dollar soldering gun our uh, expensive one hit kicked the bucket the other day, which is uh, buried in that corner there with all the dirty rags and all that other crap. So, yes, give me a few seconds and I'll uh, show you what I did. Okay, did a little trimming on some unnecessary pins. The top three is my positive, the bottom three is my negative. That was probably very hard to see. And on here, use my screwdriver here so this here is your positive these two and uh, ah, these two is your negative these two are your positive so I'll show you more once I uh, solder it on here that way you know it's done proper and uh, I don't want to have to uh, buy another one of these boards just for one data recovery if I don't have to no it's, I know it's probably pretty out of focus but you can see the two connections I cleaned up somewhat there so now you can see where they are a little bit better okay so the easy part is done I know I never filmed it much uh, this is the next day ended up getting swamped with customers so I just soldered that on again this is the easy part I got my positive my negative going to my uh, SATA connector here and the hot glue is just to make it a little bit more durable because I do have about 450 gigabytes of data that I have to transfer. I'm going to try using the transfer dock there to transfer to another 640 gig or maybe even a 1 terabyte uh, drive. Or I might just do it with the actual computer which I use a couple different software techniques that makes it a little bit quicker but it's still going to take a lot of time. As for time I'm into this so far for about half an hour to 45 minutes. Uh, I had to look up the wiring schematics to know what pins to use for what. So I'm not just pulling this out of my ass, of course. So 
basically those were the power now this is going to be the SATA connections here so uh, which is kinda I have done a drive along this lines before uh, just not quite with the port built in like this so and man is that chewed up it's kinda hard to see so again I could have just soldered off that and uh, got another jack but if I do do that and transfer all the data through USB because uh, he doesn't want this hard drive no more. He wants to switch to a new style hard drive. So just repairing this jack, I would now have to transfer 450 gigabytes through USB 2. Anyone that knows anything about computers knows that would be like a day and a half. So going through to SATA, 450 gigabytes should take about four hours on average. So, okay. I'll start the video now once I uh, have the other connections on. Or I might just assemble this on the board just to make sure it spins up. Might be a good idea before I continue, hey? <laughs> okay, so got it all hooked up. Well, power wise. So before I go ahead, I'm going to actually plug it in, make sure the drive spins up. Uh, see what happens. Because I just want to make sure he wasn't tampering with it. Because, you know, uh, if he said he tried to open the case because he was thinking he would take the platters and put them into another drive. Yeah, that's never a good thing. So, And he claims he couldn't get it open, but. I have had customers say they never open drives, open them and find them full of garbage. So, because we do quite a bit of data recovery. Anyway, I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. Uh, it, now, if he would have told me he would have opened it and got it opened, he said he never got any of the screws out. So, they look like they weren't touched. But if he would have said he would have had it open, I would have opened it, double check everything before I plug it in. So, here goes nothing. I'm going to plug it into this system here. Uh, I'm going to unplug my redneck air conditioner. You know, redneck air conditioner. 120 mil case fan. Now, I am doing a data recovery up there for another customer. So, this better not kill my computer when I plug it in. Uh, oh, I thought you wanted my connections. Have them plug in there. Uh, so, give me a second. I'm not sure how I'm going to hold my camera while I plug that in. Uh... I don't know if you'll even hear it spinning up if it spins up. Always plug these in perfectly straight. You don't want no shorts. Oh, we got lightage. And it's spinning up. I know you're not going to hear that over my computer. Yeah, it's spinning up. Everything's checking proper. Yep. Won't focus with the light on there, but there we go. Yep, everything spun up, booted up proper. So, okay. Now I can continue soldering on my other connections. And of course, it'd be better if I had a better camera for this. So I'll start the camera again once I uh, get some of those or all of them soldered on. So, And for what kind of cabling I'm going to use, not too sure yet. Uh, I'm going to use probably this just plain white stuff here. Uh, I was a re a re or initially going to use Cat5 here. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, stiff, thick wire. Uh, but for some reason, this Cat5 cable that we have doesn't like solder, where the Cat5 cable I use at home loves solder. So it must be just different brands of cable. So this stuff here should work out good. Just plain white cable. A little bit easier to work with. We'll see what happens. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I got all my jumper wires soldered onto the board. Sure, they may not look the nicest, but I'm working without a magnifying glass and with a shitty, shitty soldering iron with a fairly big tip. So, and my glasses are off. <laughs> Going a little bit open-eyed on this one. So, uh, time to put on my next connector, which is this little guy right here. So, which isn't going to be hard. This should technically be the easy part. So, okay. And one more thing, of course, if you ever do this, uh, make sure to trim your wires on the other side. I'm not sure if they're showing up there, but <laughs> they are a little bit long. So, just thought I'd kind of mention that because I have seen a buddy of mine short out something by not trimming them. <laughs> Which is common sense, technically. I just thought I'd throw that in the video just to kind of bug them. <laughs> 
Okay, so now that I got my wires, I know this is out of focus and probably blurry. Where's my pointer? Ooh, I'm looking through the screen. So now I'm going to be removing the C31, C37, C13, and C18 capacitors, which are going to be disabling the USB controller. Uh, otherwise, it just won't work. So uh, I know a few people with other issues were talking about uh, replacing the crystal, which I haven't done before on one of these drives. Uh, and if you're switching boards from another drive, you got to change the U12. And some people even see the U14. But normally, that's only if your drive's completely dead, not spinning up. In this case, it's just a USB uh, issue. So uh, I'll start the video again once I have those removed. And I hate removing those things, even though it's actually fairly easy. But whatever. No, oh, that's hard to see, but they are removed. And again, Got my wires trimmed so they're not touching anything. Time to reassemble, glue up some wires, and uh, solder on the end connector on the SATA thing. Uh, SATA connector thingy. <laughs> you know what I mean. And then uh, give it a try. Okay, so I got it on. I just got to double check my wires, make sure everything's right. I know I got to improve my soldering skills, but I'm, again, using a crappy crappy soldering gun in my opinion uh, pretty big tip I'm not sure if you can see that but that's a huge tip compared to what I'm used to uh, this is the wiring diagram I guess I could show this here that I'm going off of uh, just kind of leave it there for a while in case anyone has to write it down I doubt anyone's going to actually be looking at this video but again the reason why I'm actually posting this video is I'm going to put the search words the model of this board and the hard drive in the description so if someone's searching Google for information how to do this maybe they'll come across my video and hopefully it'll help someone and if not well shows that it could be done and uh, whatever which of course it could be done but I mean it shows what needs to be involved to do it so because I know a lot of people want to switch these over for backing up data it's really the only way to do it so because USB of course takes forever there we go should be a little bit more durable because I gotta do quite a bit of transferring with this. I'm also going to call the customer uh, once I test to make sure it works. Give him an option to pick it up like this and maybe he'll do the backup himself or we'll do it. So because if he does the backup himself uh, I'm only into this for about an hour and a half. So it'll be around uh, what 100 bucks. <laughs> so just an idea. So okay. Sweet. Okay, here's the final test. Just going to give it a reboot. And that wasn't Windows Windows, so you don't have to worry about doing a hard reboot like that. That's just running off the memory. But uh, it was a uh, Hiron's boot CD. I do everything through mini Windows pretty much, so give me a second here. Once uh, mini Windows boots up, I'll. Uh, Show you if it recognized. Okay, it's on. It detects. But it has super a lot of errors. So let me just move this here. Uh, I can't move that without probably freezing the program. But it is detecting. Uh, okay, it's hooked up. It's being recognized. But everything's out of whack right now. Uh, so I gotta run a couple different softwares on it showing up as being uh, 2000 gigabytes when it's only 500 then it showed up as being 200,000 gigabytes which is no an issue so I gotta run some software on it clean it up uh, also the heads seem like they're stuck because I gave it a swift whack on the table and it seemed to actually fix the problem now that it's readable uh, but there's a lot of bad sectors and a lot of issues with the drive uh, but I'll be able to recover, I'm sure, of it at least 80 to 90% of his data. So, I thought I'd kind of post that in the video. So, basically, I just took the drive and I give it a. Actually, I'll show you with the parts drive. So, say this is a drive that I borrowed some components off to fix that one, uh, just to say the headers. So, I just gave that other drive a hit just like that, and it was enough to actually make it start reading. So sometimes shit gets stuck in there where you got to give them a little bit of a hit. I normally would not recommend doing that unless you really have to. Uh, but I got it reading in this case. So, okay. 
So when I first plugged in this hard drive, it was first showing up as a 2 terabyte when it's only a 500 gigabyte. Then it showed up as a 20,000 terabyte drive or whatever, and it was corrupt. So it was pretty corrupt. Uh, I ran a couple different tools on it. I'm not going to get into any details of what tools or anything uh, to clean it up. Uh, got it going. Everything's transferring good. Transferring to just an A data drive that's right there. I'm not going to show any more on the recovery because uh, everything's going good. Again, this video here is just to get it so you can read it uh, in case you break your USB. In this case, the guy must have stepped on it, crunched it, smashed it. Who knows what because it's still having a couple errors as it's going along. But it's, uh, of course, readable now, transferring what I can off it. And I'm guessing I'll be able to get at least 80% of his data which is going to make them super happy. So especially the fact that we're doing this for about 5% of or 10% of the price that uh, get that uh, on tracks charges. Uh, so, so we are a dealer through them. So let's see here. He is getting his service within a day. I actually don't have their price list anymore, but if you go through this company here, it's almost a, uh, close to two grand so <laughs> so and this guy here is going to be paying maybe 200 bucks so and uh not including the hard drive the hard drive is like 60 bucks or whatever so like 260 bucks which in my opinion the amount of work i'm into it he's getting one hell of a deal because believe it or not that was a bitch that was a data backup from hell so and the fact that i'm i still got about uh 400 gigabytes worth of data to transfer yeah, better not crash, that's all I can say. This is the end of this video. Once again, I don't plan on making too many videos like this from work. It's just for kind of, you know what I mean, funsies, I guess you can say it. So on boring days, even though right now i got a whole pile of laptops and a whole pile of crap that just came in. So just thought I'd make this video just for the hell of it.